on a night that could decide a lot about how this championship is going to play out, we welcome you live to Texas Motor Speedway for round number 28 of 30 in the 2022 1UP Superstar Series schedule. We're here for 76 laps around this very unique mile and a half racetrack that could, like I said, decide a lot on who hoists the big hardware at season's end. Alongside me in the booth for today's race once again is Ryan Griffin, and this race is going to be a big factor in who plays out as champion because our two title protagonists are only one point apart going into this race, and they're starting right next to each other as well. And at an untested racetrack, they got a lot on the line here tonight. As we saw in Atlanta, one moment can change everything. Chris, uh, Christian Vargas last week pulled off a late race charge to claim the win and retake the point lead. And that's all it's really that all that's all it really takes is one defining moment can flip this entire championship on its end. Right now there's only two guys that are realistically within a, a shot at, at taking the championship lead, that being Vargas and Mashburn, but you never know. And on an untested track as we're gonna see tonight, who knows what could happen. And remember, the week before Atlanta, Miles Mashburn led 95 of the 100 laps at North Wilkesboro to take a win for himself. So you never. So these two titans have have combined to win the last three races, with Vargas picking up a win at Talladega as well. So these guys are rising to the occasion when it matters most. As we can now look at the starting lineup for today's 76 lap race and. We have a new pole sitter for the 28th time this season. Stephen Gale puts his number 35 Toyota on pole. Cale Tesco Jr. lines up alongside. And then you have the two title favorites, Mashburn and Vargas, right beside each other on row two. And that is going to be our big focus on the day. Can they b both avoid trouble, finish up front, and decide this championship between them for real this time? It's almost like a boxing match. You know, one, one guy gets his shot in, his right hook in, or his left hook in, and the other one does his counter, and, and that's what they, it seems like they've done so far, both Mashburn and Vargas, through these first two races, so, or through these the previous two races. It'll be interesting to see, you know, three races to go. We got the untested track today. They're starting next to each other. Will we see another blow, or will we see a defense? So with that being said, we're looking forward to the next round ahead of us. As 76 laps await the 42 drivers on the grid, and we are ready to bring you those racing laps from you at Texas Motor Speedway. This is the 1UP Superstar Series from Texas, and the green flag is coming up very, very soon. So don't go anywhere, folks. You're not going to want to miss a second of what's to come in this race tonight. With the pace car on pit road, it leaves us in the hands of Stephen Gale and Cale Tescar Jr. into the Geico restart zone. Green flag in the air. We're underway for 76 at Texas Motor Speedway. It looks pretty even off the line, and this pack is already diving it off into turn one. It's a pretty unique track, this Texas Motor Speedway. It's very wide in one and two, but they're not going to use the entire track. They want to stay as close to that bottom as possible to get as good a run as possible going into turn three. Yeah, it's not so much that the track is wide, we just don't have, there's not as much banking in one and two here as there is in three and four. So with side by side, you see right now, you're not gonna see it that often in the one and two, definitely could see it one in three and four, as Gale does lead the first lap. And here, <laughs> here comes uh, Mashburn, looks like Mashburn's gonna try to take the first shot, but no, the outside gets the run and Kaskar hangs on to second. Yeah, Cale Tescar Jr. moving on Stephen Gale for the race lead. Now Mashburn and Vargas nose to tail on the outside with Nelson Reeves and Roberto Crown Jr. on the bottom. Tescar takes the lead off of four, and they're beaten and banging off a of turn four behind them. Jeffrey Finguy, Henry Thomas, Jones, Halleck, and Ortiz back there as well. This is the danger of running three wide in the early stages. You could get torn up much earlier than you want to. Again, we saw this last week in Atlanta on the, the new configuration Atlanta. Don't expect to see much of this throughout the day here at Texas, but again, the, the pack all together here is Reeves is going to try to look under Tascar to see if he can lead at the line. I don't think I think Tascar will hang on. He does, but Reeves is going to try to take the lead here in turn one. Nelson Reeves, he's 
got his future set on the Turbo Truck Series next year, but he wants to prove he's got what it takes behind the wheel of a superstar car as well. He takes the lead from his teammate Kale Tescar Jr. to lead going into turn three, but Mashburn makes a dive to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to take second away from Tescar, and all this while Christian Vargas is falling through the pack. He's already back to about the eighth position. Reeves leads at the line, but Mashburn trying to get second away. Field all still close together here, so nobody really, uh, the leader has yet to really check out. All the Reeves has got now maybe about car length lead on Tascar as Tascar again hangs on to second. But it's the championship pair we're keeping an eye on right now. Mashburn runs third. Vargas, last time they crossed the line, was ninth. He might have lost that spot to Bobo Jones. He's trying desperately to hang on to it as Mashburn now gets pushed up to the high side by Devin Fair in the 51 with Henry Thomas pushing him and Jake Uhalik pushing him. So Mashburn is going to try and get a run off the top to try and clear to 51. Looks like he'll be able to do it. So Mashburn holds on the third while Vargas down in ninth place. As things run right now, Mashburn would take the championship lead back. So still early. We're only on lap 6 of 76 and Again, as we saw last week with the late run that Vargas had, it can flip turn that quickly. So, as it is Reeves leading Tascar, the battle for third right now. Thomas and Mashburn continue to battle for that third position. But Mashburn, again, it, the outside, if you run that outside off turn two, you can get enough of a run to stay ahead of the guy on the inside. The outside has good momentum outside of turn two when you, when you come off turn two on the high side. And that's why Mashburn has been able to hang on to third as Fair runs in fifth. He's got Crown behind him as they're going to try to make look on Thomas here in the one. Again, the high side is preferred on exit, so I would expect Thomas to maybe get a run here. Nope, Fair looks like might actually take that position, and he does. And back and at Devin the front. Fair with back, back at the front, Kale Tescar Jr. trying to get back around Nelson Reeves for the lead. Tescar wants to get his second career win. Reeves looking for career win number one. They come off turn four side by side. Not much longer, though, because Tescar leads at the line to complete lap number eight. And we've got trouble on the racetrack. A big wreck in the back of the field. Oh, we got a huge pile up on the front straightaway that has taken out at least seven cars. Ryan Jackson being among them. Memphis Fisher, Andres Molina. KJ Hayes, I Polanski, I think, was in there. I think the 18 got caught up in that. And that was Jared Polanski. And that will officially call his championship odds as complete. He will not win his first championship here this season. As the caution flies for the first time today, as Nelson Reeves and Cale Tiscar Jr. just barely weave their way through the mess. Echo Ross, very slow on the racetrack, trying to... Oh, and she makes contact with the 35 of Gale, the pole sitter. Ross trying to get back up to speed. A very big crash to start this race on lap number nine that has eliminated at least eight cars. And it looked like it was about mid back. That was right where we saw the, them running about three wide. But man, a lot of, lot of, I guess you could say, uh, million dollar sheet metal there all tore up there in the front straightaway here at Texas. And they say everything's bigger in this state. Well, I guess the wrecks are too. And you saw Billy Kidd pull in to retire. His superstar debut ends on lap number nine. Pit stops now the order of the day for the leaders. They all make their way on the pit road to receive service from their teams and once the pit stop cycle is complete we'll get you a replay of what happened to all of these cars to cause this caution on lap number nine but we're on lap 11 now kale tesco jr the first one to pull into his pit box and soon we will see the running orders they exit the pit lane yeah right now after 10 laps it's like you're, you want to make sure and get handle read everybody's probably gonna come here because this is the first stops of the day so you're probably gonna see four tires here for everybody any adjustments that need to be done and we're gonna have a little shuffle in the running order by the looks of it yeah it looks like the 19 might have taken two tires to get out in front of the leaders but now we're gonna get you a very good look at what happens to your you're absolutely right. It looks like they're three wide in the middle of the pack. Ramian Fisher on the inside, Polanski in the middle. They make contact, and Christian Vargas dodged a bullet right there to avoid even more damage. Felix Anderson, oh, and it's like bowling ball, wow. bowling pins being scattered on the front stretch here at Texas. Well, Look at all those yeah, cars piling say, in. You, you know it's a hit when a car is airborne, and Polanski he had two tires. He was about on his side down the front straightaway at Vargas. Vargas is probably looking for a change of underwear here under this 18 spun down the track. And as you can see, he's on the top side here. Polanski in the middle, and they just 
they come together in the middle and the inside and man it's just mayhem and what a hit i don't know who it was that hit polanski but man that was a hit and the back the end of the field there. becomes a parking lot here at texas motor speedway that is andres molina's eighth dnf of the season for that seven team you hate to see it for them but jared polanski is the big loser in this his championship hopes now officially done here at texas but we're going to come to a restart here pretty soon, and as you saw in the pit lane, the 19 of Blair took two tires on her pit stop, so she is going to be the race leader. Jesse Johns is on the tail end of the lead lap in the 47. He will probably restart in front of the 19. Echo Ross, a lap down, will start on the inside lane. Then you have Cale Tescar Jr. and Nelson Rees. They line up second and third. Devin Fair, fourth. Thomas runs out the top five. Then you have Mashburn, Bobo Jones, Roberto Crone Jr., Stephen Gale, and Jeff Bolton running out the top ten. Christian Vargas mired very deep in the field. About, looks like, about 18th place at 4 to 54. So, as things run right now, Mashburn would take the points lead back. Actually, Vargas in 16th position as they run. But, regardless, Mashburn would have the points lead as they run right now, so... It's still very early in this race, and a lot can still happen, but... It, there's not a lot of time left for Mashburn and Vargas to start making moves. Well, it'll be interesting to see here, I, just from my experience at this track, that... It'd be interesting to see if it's going to be track position over tires here, because the 19 is, as we said, going to be on two tires here. And we've already, we already... We know at the 02 and the... The 17 have, because we just saw them up there fight for the lead. Now, they're going to be on four tires. Now, can Blair hang on on two tires because of track position? Now, past history at Texas says the track position tends to be key here, but I don't know if Blair has the car to be able to hang on versus Tascar and, and Reeves, who have been at the front basically since the start of this race. It'll all be decided on this restart on lap number 14. So as they run right now, Blair leads from Tescar, from Reeves, Fair and Thomas run out to top five. Championship leader as they run, Miles Mashburn runs sixth. And championship leader going into this race, Christian Vargas, is 16th. So it's there's and, still, and yeah. I was going to say, and there's another factor. We have a tail end of the lead lap car, 47 here in front of Blair. That's going to be another obstacle, in addition to obviously having the, the lap cars to the inside. But... Having a car on the tail end of the lead lap in front of Blair is definitely going to create an interesting situation here, and we'll have to see how it plays out. My question is, who's going to be the first one to go to the bottom and try and get past the leaders that way? Because the pace car pulls off, because these three lappers will probably be slower than the lead lap cars. We go into the restart zone once again, green flag back in the air, Blair leads them across the line, but Nelson Reeves, you can see he's already chomping at the bit. To make a move, he he does make a move, but Nelson, but Devin Fair makes a move on the 17. He puts the 17 up high. Well, what's going to be interesting too is not only are the lap cars the inside going to be slow, but the inside, especially off turn two, does not appear to be the preferred lane. So, and Blair already is already looking near the inside of one of those lap cars, and that is the 39 of Echo Ross. But Cascar again with those four tires is right up the back. Oh, and we got team. cars in the grass. This could be big. In the grass. Oh, and we got trouble. And it's and Mashburn. Mashburn, the championship leader into the wall with some heavy damage on that 72. This could, has caused severe championship implications for that 72 team. Caution is out once again as they race back to the line. And you saw, as soon as we saw cars on the grass, you knew it was going to be a rough situation for everybody involved. That's Just. Jesse Johns gets his lap back as they race back to the caution. Tescar leads, but Mashburn it, needing, a, needing a perfect day, having a very imperfect day so far. That, that's the second straight caution we've seen one of the championship, one of the two heavyweights we talked about. You, Vargas just barely missed that first wreck. And now here, the next caution in, unfortunately, Mashburn is caught up in this incident. And honestly, it looks like the only car that actually has damage. It, it, it looked like, again, we'll see a replay here in a minute, but it looked like Jeff Bolton, the 38, was the first car in the grass that we saw. And you then saw, the next thing we saw was Mashburn around. And you saw Stephen Gale enter the pits as well. It looked like he had some damage. The pole sitter in that 35 car was way slow entering the pit lane. As you see the field stacking up behind the pace car. It looks like a couple of people will head the pit road, probably the majority, but not everybody. And this actually puts Blair back in sequence of everybody else under this caution. However, 
We do have some cars staying out here. Daniel Bouchard, Mark Davey, Nick Ortiz, Justin Hutchinson, Diego Yepes is staying out there. We got a lot. We got a, a shake up a strategy here, and this could be a very key moment for the rest of the season. If Mashburn can keep this car running, and if Mashburn can get this thing to the finish line and hope for more attrition, he may not be out of this title fight just yet. And to go back to what you said about Blair, this was is going to look like a good move for that 19 team because now they have track position and they can come in and pit with these guys and, and take four tires. It'll be basically right with a net gain for them, even though, yeah, two tires is risky if you go on a longer run, but it paid off for them. So this is, looks like yeah. where it all starts. Thomas gets into Roberto Crown Jr. and Jeff Bolton. They all come into Mashburn at the same time, and Mashburn and Stephen Gale, to an extent, just a, just a bystander in this one. You it's, hate it's, to it's, see it for that 72 team who did nothing hard. wrong in this playoffs. It's hard to see it, too, but it, it, I don't know if the eight may have gotten hit, but yeah, he just came right down into the two cars that were on his inside. The question is, did he get hit here, maybe by Bobo Jones? We're about to find out here. No, I think no, he, he just, just No, I, he crown clipped him. I think crown, crown clipped him off the, off the corner, and that's what sent him down. And this but might un be... Unfortunately for Mashburn, you know, this is... I mean, they're still running. That's the good thing. They are. It, it appears that they're still running, but even still, this definitely... may even still this may be what cost Miles Mashburn his first championship, because right now he is mired in 28th place. And look at one of the cars that stayed out, the 54 of Christian Vargas. He now runs in the third position. Let's see if he can hang on to this track position. So it looks like six cars stayed on the racetrack. And the first car that came off pit road is Kale Tescar Jr. in 7th. Then you have Reeves, Fair, and Blair in the 19, who is back in sync with everybody else. She's 10th. Just ahead of Roberto Crown Jr. in 11th. But we have six cars that stayed out. Bouchard, Davey, Vargas, Ortiz, Yepes, and Hutchinson. They are going to be your race leaders when we take this next restart. And I'm curious to but see what Vargas can do now at the front of the it's, field. It's interesting because... How much this race is, is flip turned and just basically two caution periods. I mean, in the previous caution period, we're talking about where Vargas was and how he needs to, to do something because where he was running. And here we are, Vargas is now third, and Mashburn's got the crash damage. So it's interesting how quickly it can flip. You know, basically, <laughs> my caution period. I, I don't think anybody expected this when we came into Texas. Let's see what happens here for this restart. The lights are out on the pace car. We will be going green next time to cross the line. So it'll be Daniel Bouchard, last among the playoff contenders going into this race. He is your race leader, as you see the lappers come up to rejoin at the front of the field. Mark Davey, he's 13th in points. He needs something big to happen to salvage his, se his season. He runs second. Christian Vargas, he's, the, he's now the far and away the championship leader in third. Nick Ortiz, he needed a strong day. He was 12th in points going into this race. He's 4th. Diego Yepes just looking for some momentum. 5th. Justin Hutchinson, 6th. Then Tescar, Reeves, Fair, and Blair rounding out the top 10. We're getting ready for a restart. Will it end the same as the other two? It's it's funny that you when I hear you doing the rundown and you hear Fair and Blair. is like, are we paging Dr. Seuss here? I mean... <laughs> but yeah, Bouchard's going to lead here on the restart. And from the I guess you could say barely lap we ran on that previous restart. It looked like the leader was able to clear the lap traffic again using the high side off turn two. We'll see if Bouchard can do the same here. But critically, there's no lead, end of the lead lap car in front this time. This time, Bouchard's, got, also true, clear, yeah. Bouchard's got clear air in front of him this time. He's trying to make something happen. But we're about to find out. Come off turn four. Ace car's getting ready to pull off. And I hope this will be the final restart of the night. So coming into the restart and zone, round. green flags out, we're back underway at Texas. Bouchard leads him across the line, and it looks like he's going to instantly clear the lappers, and so will Mark Davey. Question is, what can Vargas do on the top of the racetrack? He's already alongside Ross. I think he's going to have a pretty easy time clearing them. It's all a matter of what he can do with this clear air now that he's got it. And now for, and now for Vargas, pretty much at this point, you just... You need to keep your nose clean. You know, Mash. I'm sure the crew has told him about Mashburn's problem. So at this point, with Vargas, you just have to be clean. Just have to be clean. Keep that nose clean, and try to have a clean day here. 
and to keep it clean there's no better place to be than out front which is where he's at right now in the third position breathing down Mark Davies neck and you can see Mashburn and Gale well off the pace of the rest of the field they're going to be non-factors for the rest of the night but up at the front Bouchard leads comfortably ahead of the side-by-side -side battling pair of Vargas and Davy. this is going to be big because coming off for turn four, Vargas is going to clear. And we've got, looks like I've got more trouble in the back. And it's Duke Anzac, Nelson Reeves Please. involved. Roberto Crown Jr. And oh, a bunch of cars torn up. Oh, and there's the final blow. Four miles, Mashburn. That is not going to be recoverable. His day done here at Texas. Yeah, that's, that's two days you didn't want to see. And first, obviously, and foremost is Mashburn. But Nelson Reeves, who was having such a good run, too, is all tore up now. Fitzwater with damage. Yeah, Nelson Reeves was having a very good day. He led four laps of this race, but he, but he is not immune to being done for the day as well. His day and, is and done. That's, that's the that's the problem. You just you, you see these split strategies. You get back a little ways, and unfortunately for Reeves, he got caught up in something, and his day is done. I think it's going to be same story, second chapter. Yep, Reeves and Crown get together. They're teammates, remember. Duke Antac gets a piece as well. Fitzwater piles in. Grigsby piles in. Jesse Johns with some damage. And then, honestly, I don't know if they're... I think Crown was slid down the track right into Miles Mashburn's path. Nowhere the 72 could go on that occasion. And that's actually the second three-wide deal that Crown was in tonight. Remember, he was in that earlier deal when Bolton got in the grass. The first incident that damaged Mashburn is going to end his night. Yeah, we'll take another look at this. Reeves on the top. Crown just gets up, gets down. I think Anzac's actually the one that washes up. And then Crown... Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, it looked like the 83 came up as they were coming off the corner. Reeves was trying to make the straight corner, and I think Crown was just the guy in the middle. But for now, but that leaves now three of the four Kings Motorsports Toyotas out of this race before you've even hit the hit halfway, leaving Kale Tescar Jr. is the only hope for that Kings Motorsports team at the end of the day. You just hate to see it for everybody involved, especially that 72 of Miles Mashburn. You, he was the underdog going into this championship fight. He's up against the defending series champ, but after today, his hopes of a championship are looking very slim at the moment. And I'll, I'll say something else, too. You know, we were talking last week, Atlanta, with, with the new configuration and the, the super speedway-style racing it created. We thought we were going to have... You know, we thought we were going to have this last week. We would expect it coming into this week, it, you know, 25 laps into the race, and we've already had two, or really three incidents that have caused some attrition here. And keep in mind, there's only 27 cars running in this race anymore anymore we have the two we have ross and henley a lap down you have jason parker who's three laps down and then that's and then everybody else on the lead lap and that's it we've lost so many from this race that at this point in the race it's just a matter of keeping it clean from here on out here you see the survivors we have of this race and now you see christian vargas he pitted under that caution he runs 18th now he just needs to avoid trouble the rest of the day. If he can do that, he'll have a very big lead heading towards Rockingham. And this this could be, for Vargas, this could be the race. You know, we talk about moments, and in, in we've talked about it in, in the, uh, the pre-race, that, you know, moments that can define a season. This could be Vargas' moment here. So the one to go signal from the pace car, Echo Ross comes to join Kale Tescar Jr. on the front row. Tescar leads this race. He stayed out. Henry Thomas also stayed out. Looks like the first, I can't even tell anymore based on, on the, all these split strategies, who's pitted and who has it. But Kale Tescar Jr. leads from Henry Thomas, who's looking to snap a very long winless streak in that eight car. Could today be the day with all this attrition. J.D. Martin runs third ahead of J.Q. Halleck in fourth. Jeffrey Finguy runs fifth. Sam Donato and Henderson Reed runs seventh. Reed started 40th in this race. He's already up to seventh. Bobo Jones eighth. Stephen Gale with a crippled race car in ninth. And Jeff Bolton running out the top ten. So we're getting ready for a restart with 50 laps to go. And you already said it. I, that's going to be another thing to watch, too. Gale is damaged, and he's restarting here ninth, so that's... That's obviously going to create some sort of checkup in the pack. So, you know, we talk about Vargas starting back where he is. You know, he's going to be behind that. So can he get around 
the damage to KO and I gained some positions. We're all about to find out together as the pace car gets ready to pull off a, off the racetrack, coming through three and four. Kale Tesco Jr. looking for his first win since Monza all the way back in the spring. He is your race leader ahead of Thomas, Martin, Halleck, and Finn Guy running out the top five. Pace cars off. We're getting ready for this time what hopefully is the final restart of the race. Green flag back in the air. As you can see, no no tailing of that car in front of Tascar. He's easily going to clear Echo Ross in the one. Thomas going to try to clear as well. And should, it should clear off of two here. The high side's preferred lane. But no, Ross is actually going to hang with Thomas off of turn two. And you can see, even before he even completed a lap, Stephen Gale's fallen from ninth place to outside the top 20. That is a very damaged race car in that 35, and he's holding up a lot of cars behind him. And then there are three again off of, off of four. I think there was contact here between Whoa, Ross Farron and Ortiz Martin. almost made contact. They almost wrecked going into one. They save it. Vargas looked like he was the car being held up behind Stephen Gale, but that's okay. As long as he keeps his nose clean and finishes this race in one piece, he'll have a really big lead heading to Rockingham. Yeah, I think I think there was two contacts we saw there in the previous lap. I saw Martin and uh, and um, Ross get together, but I think you saw another one at the same time there off turn four as, as Pascar does lead Thomas. They did clear the lap cars. Henry Thomas now looking to break a very long wait for another victory. It's 91 races, 92 races since his last win. All that time ago at Pikes Peak. He, he's been wanting a, a win so badly before he goes down to the Nitro National Series next year. Could this be the time for Henry Thomas at long last? There's still a lot of racing left to go, but he's running in second behind Cale Tesco Jr. He's got a pretty good shot at it right now. I've noticed, too, that the double zero has entered the picture here. Sam Donato sitting there third. Good run for them so far. Obviously, you mentioned, I heard Finn guy, you mentioned Finn guy when you did your rundown. So Finn guy there, P4. Because they got a couple lap cars between, or one lap car between them and the top two. And Bobo Jones sneaking his way into the top five for a brief moment before Justin Hutchinson blocks that spot off of him. But coming off turn four. We've... And Hutchinson actually has help from his teammate behind him. He actually has got both teammates behind him right now. Yeah, he's got two teammates the back inside. there. And if you look a few cars back, you see their fourth teammate Blair in the 19th. So all four of the finish line motorsports cars still in this race and all running on the bottom together and that could bode well for them as Thomas goes for the lead into three. And he's got a little help. Donato and the double zero are going to be right behind him. I a little bit of draft, even if, it, even if it doesn't seem like a super speedway type race, a little bit of draft can still help you pass somebody. And uh, Donato may try to look for the lead here in one and two. I don't know if he's going to have the preferred line in one and two, but he may have a look for it here. But for right now, he is all over the back bumper of that eight. Yeah, he is very much within pl in play for the race lead. We got a lot of cars now battling for the lead. Justin Henley, the lap car among them, but. Henry Thomas leads the way from the Noto. Now you got Finn Guy up in third as Kale Tesco Jr. continues to slide back through the field. He now is battling Justin Hutchinson for that fourth spot. He's going to lose out there, and he might even lose out to Mark Davey and Ben McDonald, who started 23rd today. So McDonald trying to gain a lot of track position here as the Noto tries to take the lead off of Thomas. I think this inside might be coming in off of two because the last couple of cars I've seen duck that inside, even though Ross was a lap car. They've been able to make that inside work as Donato is going to get the lead on the inside from Thomas as Finn guy is going to go through to second. But Sam Donato already has two wins this season. One in the summer at Pensacola, one at Watkins Glen. He's looking to add a third here at Texas with Jeffrey Finn guy. He wants to be the first man to 10 career wins in this series. He and Christian Vargas both going for that honor here today. It, will it be one of them or will it be someone else hoisting the hardware at the end of the night? Well, we're going to find I, out. I, I, say, I, I know as a broadcaster, I'm supposed to be non-biased, but that man's my team owner in the truck series. So I'm rooting for him silently up here. There's, there's Davey, Mark Davey now up the third. Let's see if he can try to get to Finn Guy. And he does, and get, he to, he does get to Finn Guy. Mark Davey to the, right, to, to the second position. He's, despite him being a noted road course expert, and he's gotten all of his Nitro National wins on the road courses, both of his career wins this season have been on the ovals as he now gets underneath Sam Donato for the race lead. So move Mark Davey to the point, coming to complete lap 35. See, he had such a great run through three and four on the inside, and it's almost like he went by Donato as if he had, you know, like 10 extra horsepower. I mean, he's actually pulled a gap now on Finn Guy. 
and I expect that gap to keep building. That 01 car is rocket fast in that in that cheese it forward. He's taking the lead now, and he's building a massive gap out front. This is the biggest lead we've seen anybody have in this race. Put the 01 to in a very good position as we now have 40 laps to go. Is it a four? It is a Ford one two at the moment. Davy leads Finn guy. How about the 12 up there in third place? Where'd he come from? At this rate, he might even be able to snatch second off of Miles Mashburn in the championship and McDonnell might. He, he was third going into this race, and he was he was adamant about needing a good day here today to claw back into the championship hunt. He, he entered this race 44 points out of the lead, but with Miles Mashburn's DNF today, he's in he's in, he's in a good position to take second in the points as they run right now. But right now, nobody's got a better view out front than Mark Davey, who now enjoys a full seconds lead over the squabbling pair of Bouchard and Finn Guy for second. Actually, that group, we, we mentioned Ben McDonald in the 12, he got kicked to the high side. Now Finn Guy looks like got kicked to the high side. So now Bouchard's going to go through to second. Hutchinson, I think, is now third. And I think Blair's actually snuck her way up to the fourth, so a net gain for the 19, who's now in the top five. If you see Christian Vargas back there, he's running ninth now. So doing a doing exactly what he needs to do. Solid day, top ten, easy easy pickings. Just take the points and you run with them because you now have a massive lead over so over the rest of the field heading towards Rockingham. But the battle's for second right now, and it's between these four: Bouchard, Hutchinson, Blair, and McDonald. Not in that order. Battling for second as Mark Davy pulls out to a 1.8 second lead. So you have actually kind of, well, Blair's going to gain a little bit back here, but they actually have pulled about a car length on Blair, so it really was a three-car battle. But now they're going to get back in, in almost single file here as Bouchard continues to lead Hutchinson here for this second position. Now McDonald sneaks Argus, to the inside. Argus now threw it, looks like up to, is now up to six. He is up to six, is Christian Vargas. Now he is in prime position to score a massive haul of points by the end of this race, but still have a lot of racing left to go. We've passed halfway now. It's just a matter of what is going to take place for the remaining laps, because I don't believe these guys have enough to make it on a full tank of fuel, so they might be back into the pits again. We'll, we'll find out in a moment, but Mark Davey doesn't want this race to... Actually, he wants this race to end as soon as possible. He wants it to be called right now. He's got a 1.9 second lead. I say at this point, it looks like Davey's like, okay, I, I'm going to mental car from the airport and get out of here. I mean, he was checked out on the field right now. And again, it might be the spread strategies. Again, we couldn't really, we couldn't really know who fresh tires were not. So Davey might have been one of those ones that stopped under the previous yellow. And that might be why he's, he's gapped the field the way he has. But how about Christian Vargas? He was 18th on the restart, and now he's inside the top five. Chasing down and Hutchinson and McDonald as they battle for third. And if we didn't want to know more about tires, again, Vargas pitted under that previous yellow. That's why he was back there restarting 18th. There he is. He's running P5, trying to take P4 possibly here from what would be McDonald, who gets kicked to the high side. This is just this is just getting better and better for Christian Vargas's hopes at a back-to-back -back championship. He now runs fifth, and as they run right now, he would have a massive lead over Ben McDonald, who would move up into second as they run in the championship. Miles Mashburn would slip back to probably around third, but Vargas now up to fourth, and he's just got to hope that Mashburn, or not that Mashburn, that Hutchinson pushes Bouchard up the racetrack, which he has. That'll move Vargas into the podium places. Vargas is looking for more because he 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 left out on Hutchinson before Hutchinson made the move on Bouchard. But I think Vargas may be looking at about maybe second place here before too long. I think he's faster than Hutchinson. I think he's the but, fastest well, car on the track at this point. He's just waiting for the moment here. Oh, I don't know. I think the I think Davey right now might be the fastest car on track the way he's yarded the field. But notice how his lead is stabilized at, at about two seconds. It hasn't gained any more in the last three or four laps. But Vargas has been on an absolute tear. He's gotten through into second now. Let's see what he does in the remaining 30 laps of this race to claw that lead back. And this is this is what makes me think that that the 01 must have must have been on fresh tires because 
he's showing similar speed to what the 54 has so far through the field, so I think maybe that the 01 was on the same tire strategy as Vargas, so I think the freshest tires are now at the front of the field. Now the question is, who's got the better car? Is it Mark Davey, the rookie, or is it Christian Vargas, the defending champion? We'll see what the lead is at the line. If they cross it, it's 2.01 seconds at the line. So Davey's just, just over two seconds. Yeah, he's pretty much he's pretty much kept his lead at about two seconds, which is perfectly fine with him. He just wants to hang on, keep his lead. But Hutchinson actually looks like he's going to try and make a move back on Vargas now for a second. Now you see, here's the interesting thing is too, you know, Hutchinson. That's you know that's the old one. Davey is a car that's one of his, that's his teammate. So him racing Vargas is actually helping Davey as they race each other. They lose they lose ground to. Davey, although they gained about three tenths that time. Yeah, I, Davey, so. they might be working in the draft whether Hutchinson wants to or not to pull that 10 car along. The 54 might be doing to try and chase down this 01 of Mark Davey. But we got Vargas in second. He's having a fantastic day with his closest championship rival crashing out and no one else remotely in contention. Vargas now in third has one hand on the championship trophy. He's just got to hold on for the remainder of this race to try and keep it. Right now, he, he definitely has that 10 car all up the back of him, and I think Hutchinson may look here going into three. We'll see if he can try to get around the defending series champion and, this and try is, to make it a 1-2 for his team. And this is honestly fine for Vargas if he loses his spot. He's got no pressure from behind. He's got to think big picture at this point. Even if it costs him five points with Hutchinson getting around him here, he can afford that. But, as you see Stephen Gale well off the pace, he's going to be lapped here pretty pretty soon. But, if Var even if Vargas has to let the 10 car go, if it means getting 40 points in the bank, while well, Mashburn's only going to get about maybe 12 at this rate, that'll be plenty fine with him. Yeah, I mean, anything to set him up to where he could go into Rockingham with a bit of a cushion and... I'm not going to say that he could lock up the championship at Rockingham with the run he's having today, but it would definitely put him in a in more comfortable position going to Rockingham. And you see Echo Ross exiting the pits. Looks like she's made her final stop of the day. So Ross falls a few, a few more laps off the pace. And the pit stops have started now. Bit of an interesting case. We, I believe they should be good to go from here if they pit now. But you never know at this place. You just never know. We've seen fuel mileage be a factor here before. Will it be a factor again? In all up front, Davey is just trying to give the field a good buy look. Although his lead has shrunk a tenth now. It's down to 1.6 seconds. But I think right now, it's. It, I've said it before in one of, the, one of the previous broadcasts, I think they're just trying to maintain the lead right now with that 01 and just trying not to get Davey to use up his car too much because of the gap he has. And just trying to maintain the gap between himself and, and Vargas at this point. Although Vargas has actually gapped the 10 car of Hutchinson. And he's closed another tenth and a half on Mark Davey. So Vargas starting to pull away from the 10 and draw a bead on the 01 for position for the race lead and potentially for a win and a championship as well. You know, Vargas, he, <laughs> he would take a second place finish at points, but if you put dangle that win in front of him and say, hey, you could also maybe, you know, put the final, I guess you can say the final nail in the coffin. As Hutchinson's the, the first one to pit among the leaders. So pit stops have properly begun now. Hutchinson's the first one to pit of the leaders. Ortiz followed him in. Now, it looked like Jesse Johns followed them in as well. Vargas now. He's closing in on Davey, and we've got. And I saw the caution lights on. This is a big detriment to Justin Hutchinson and Nick Ortiz. They pitted as the caution flag came out. This could be a very dangerous situation for them. They may fall lap down as a result. And they gotta beat. They gotta basically beat the back onto the beat the leader back to the yellow. So I don't. I don't believe they're going to. You see Ben McDonald looks like he's the one that brought out this caution flag. Oh, yeah. He's got a lot of damage on that car. And you see Lane Sanders in the pits as well. He his right do, side damage. Doesn't look too bad on the 41. He'll probably be able to continue with, with some repair work and be fine. But for McDonald, his he might be able to continue too, but he's got a lot worse damage on that car. So now yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have another run of pit stops here, and this could decide who wins and who doesn't, because they're coming on the pit road now. 
We got, we'll have about 20 laps to go when we go back green. Will that be enough for the fuel to last? And what we've seen on, what we've seen so far in this race, will we see another incident here? You know, when the field bunches back together, we've seen two incidents already today, basically lap or two after the restart. So that's something else we got to consider too and keep an eye out for that and make sure that Vargas doesn't get involved in something like that. So Ben McDonald was running in the top 10. I think Echo Ross was right behind him and she was on fresh tires. She was trying to unlap herself, but McDonald shut the door. I don't know what more could have been done there to prevent an accident, but... And Emma Carter came close to clipping the 12 as well. I think that was just two cars going for the same piece of real estate and there only being room for one of them. That and I, it also, it, it, Ross was on the fresh tires. It's probably just the closing rate too. She probably did not expect... McDonald would make the arc into the corner that he did. And looks like actually, got together. It actually looks like Lane Sanders' incident was completely unrelated to this. He might have scraped the wall at another point, but he should be fine at this point. He should be plenty good to make it through to the end of this, uh, this race. However, with this caution coming out, we now only have eight cars on the lead lap of this race. What not that something? So, and and here, again, that, that, was, that was partly due to the fact that we had that pit stop that or the, the, the green flying pit stops had started just prior to the caution coming out. So those guys got trapped, not a lap down, but tail end of lead lap. So. And they very well could fall a lap down by the time this race ends, because Mark Davey and Christian Vargas, on the proper fuel strategy, they could be in contention for a good day here today. They are still the race leaders, believe it or not, despite being this far back in the train, Mark Davey is still your race leader with Christian Vargas in second. This is going to be very interesting to see what happens now, now that the 01 and the 54 are on the same tire, same amount of fuel, got the same track position. It's going to be very interesting to see from here on out. Also it's going to be interesting is we've got a couple of damaged cars that are at the head of this group. Like I noticed the 83 and... Of course, we mentioned that uh, we've mentioned him already tonight. The 35, Stephen Gale, is, is is damaged as well. So, if those cars are going to be at the front of this line, that's going to be something to watch as well. And make sure where the checkups are and who can pick the right lane to get around get around them. But the big question now is: Do the front runners have enough fuel to make it the rest of the way? They pitted with 21 laps to go. We don't even know what the fuel window is here, considering. We had so many cautions in the early stages, but I believe that is right on the number of being able to make it. Some might make it, some might not. This could be an economy run to the checkered flag. And if you're and if you're Christian Vargas, <laughs> the only thing at this point you don't want to do is run out of fuel at all the last lap. If and I were caught yourself back position. Yeah, and so. if I were Christian Vargas, I would have pitted, pitted to come into the one to go and topped off just to make absolutely sure. Because you got nothing to lose. You're going to restart eighth at the worst. And you can slice through that traffic easily. So, what you, I, Vargas stayed out, but that, that could have been an option available to them. Pit would come into the one to go, top off with fuel, make sure you have enough. And if guys like Davey, Bouchard, and Blair, if they run out of gas, you could be in the catbird seat. We'll see what will happen here. We, I, I, pretty much most of the cars in front of Davey right now are tail end of the lead lap. They're not a lap down yet. But at the, at the speeds that 01 has been going lately, they will be pretty soon. But it's going to be a matter of how long is it going to take Davey to, negate, to negotiate that traffic to get back to clean air. Because right now he's not going to have clean air with that, with that group of cars in front of him. So... You know, we, we saw what that car could do when it was out in clean air. What's it going to do now in traffic? And now he's got, he has the disadvantage of having everybody on the lead lap, all eight of them, right behind him with fresh tires. So this is going to be a very interesting battle from here to the checkered flag. Who can make it to the end? Who won't? We'll find out in about 19 laps time. The pace car pulls off on the pit road, leaves us in hands of Mark Davey, who's really far back in the train, but he is your race leader as we're back underway at Texas. We'll see if Vargas will duck on Davey here or if he'll wait. No, Davey will actually duck first. Bouchard's going to duck. Yeah, Bouchard's going to try and make move on both of them. 
heading down in the turn. One oh, and look two. at this. Bouchard, Bouchard now making a move. Inside. Bouchard makes a move for the lead with help from Devin Fair in the 51. We haven't mentioned his name much all day. Now he's going to make a free wide move for second as Vargas now stuck on the top free wide. This is the opposite of what he wanted, but he's just got to keep his nose clean and for, the for the remainder of this race and build a big points lead. But Bouchard now leads the way with Fair in second. Davey slips back to third. McMillan now is into the third position. We haven't mentioned Jake McMillan all day. He's in the podium places now. And how about the 70 of Emma Carter there? That's the 70 car has kind of jumped into the mix now. She's up to P4. Absolutely. We got a whole new cast of characters up the front as Fair makes a move for the lead on Bouchard. So Devin Fair off of turn four looking for his second career win and his first on an oval. He, just like Cale Tesco Jr., takes the lead at the, at the moment. We've got about 15 laps to go. Can Devin Fair hold on, or will it be someone else's day here in the Lone Star State? And you see, uh, that restart is exactly what I thought was going to happen. We were talking about Davey and how he had checked out, but he was in clean air. As soon as he got in the traffic and got cars behind him that could pounce on him, they pounced. But right now, it is Fair leading the 21. Carter is third. And you got Blair right back there in the fourth spot. So... And Var but Vargas critically has gotten back to the bottom. He's behind Blair in fifth. That's fine for him as long as he can hang on to that. But he's got a lot of lap traffic to deal with for everybody involved as Emma Carter now makes a move on McMillan for second behind the 51. Watch this 70 car. This 70 car has jumped into the mix and they came to play. Can she get to fair here? With 14 to go. Emma Carter is also nursing a very long winless streak in the one-up Superstar Series. Her last win came last year at Watkins Glen. So it's been a very long time for that 70 car. To get back to victory lane would be an incredible accomplishment for her. It's been about 38, 39 races since she's been to victory lane. Could she do it here today at Texas? We're about to find out as they almost make contact between Thomas and Carter off of four, but Devin Fair continues to lead the way for the moment. And so far, Fair is pretty much Doing what he has to do and kind of picking off these lap, or these, I guess you could say they're tailing, going to lap down cars one by one. Nice and easy, not trying to take any whiskey moves. Right now it is just him and Carter. There's a lap car behind them before Blair in the 19, who runs third. And the lap car, Sam Donato, that's Emma Carter's teammate. So could Donato hold up fair enough to allow Carter for it? This could uh, not if they they all hug the bottom. That but they're all they they want to hug the bottom. It's the quickest way around, and they want this race to end as soon as humanly possible to make sure they get enough fuel on board to make it to the end. As Carter goes Carter. for the lead, Carter went and Blair also I noticed ducked around the lap car, so the 19 is going to be back in the mix here. Could be ladies' night here at Texas Motor Speedway. Got Carter in the lead. Blair trying to get second from Devin Fair. But now it's Carter out in the lead with 11 laps to go. Now, because the old one Davey is back in the fight too. He's taken over fourth. And he's got his teammate to help him along. Blair is directly ahead. She could open the holes for Davey to crawl through. But now they're working around the lap car of Sam Donato. But they got oh, another one. Oh, got, Blair on the apron. Just got by her teammate. <laughs> nice save out of that 19, and they stay third and fourth. They're, I was going to say they've come up on another lap car, JQ Halleck. Now, now they get out of the way. Ten laps to go. Remember, Halleck is Devin Fair's teammate. Could Halleck do the same thing to Carter that what Donato did to Devin Fair? Looks like they will. Devin Fair back to the inside for the lead, coming to nine to go. And what a race we have had here at Texas Motor Speedway. Devin Fair holds the lead over Emma Carter, but and Blair is right in the mix as well, but we, there's still a big question mark over the race as if they can make it from here. They're racing like they can, but I don't know. Vargas is back at the fifth spot. He's still back in contention for the win with coming to eight to go. I still can't believe the save that Blair had there in three and four. He got, she got clipped by her teammate. Look at this, she's third, and it's the ladies. It's the guys versus the ladies here tonight. <laughs> Yeah, we got... If Fair, if Fair leads Carter, Carter going to look going into one, and yep. I think she's going to get it in one, too. Oh, she absolutely will get it. Emma Carter looking to break a 39-race winless streak here today. Could this be today for Emma Carter trying to get her first oval win in a very long time, even beyond that 39-race winless streak? But 
We're coming in, closing in on seven laps to go now. This could be very big if Carter can get back to victory lane. The question is, Vargas is now up to four. Could he be a factor in the closing stages of this race and take not a much-needed like win? Like I say, not just Vargas, but Daniel Bouchard's up back up here, too, in the 73. He's up to third. Now trying to get second from fair. This is electrifying here at Under the Lights of Texas. The first night race in Texas history here for the 1UP Superstar Series, and it has not disappointed us. We are coming now to six laps to go, and Emma Carter's pulling away to a big lead. Can she hold on to it with Bouchard and Vargas hot on her heels? And I, I'll tell you what, the way this race started, if you would have told me you are going to get to a point like this and actually have this kind of racing, I... Yeah, they, they do this, but man, it's been a great second half of this race for sure. As Vargas trying to get second. Oh, they made contact! Contact. contact in the turn three! Saved it. They save it once again! Vargas and Bouchard, wow. the absolute epitome of careful driving, hard control, you name it. They hang on to it, they keep, they keep their positions. Vargas now up to second with five laps to go. That's the second time we've seen contact off that corner, and it's the second time we've seen them save it. So, wow. These guys are really going for it right now. But again, Carter leads, and then it's the teammates. Vargas and Fair. Second and third. Then you got Bouchard. Oh, Fair's out of gas. Out of Fair's, out of gas. Fair's out of gas. Fair's out of gas. He can't make it. There goes, there goes Christian Vargas' teammate for help. But Vargas, he might be able to track down the the 70 anyway because look at the gap he's cut it in half through just the first few corners i think carter has got to be looking at that fuel gauge and praying that it's enough well for fargus he's got to be careful too we're coming to three to go his teammates already hit pit road we got to make sure that he can make it too this is why is i suggested topping off with one to go to avoid this from happening got a few more on pit road now this is going to be very close uh, who can make it on fuel and who can't but Vargas, look at the run he's on. He's gonna, he, he is on fire in these last three races. He's doing everything he needs to to take his second championship in a row. And he's on his way. He's got two and a half laps to go. And it looks like Carter is gonna have to fend him off in a big way. If she can make it on fuel, which it looks like she can't. She's not gonna make it. Carter's out of gas. She talks to Pit Road. McMillan's Vargas out of gas. To the lead with two to go. Blair's out of gas. McMillan's out of gas. Vargas to the lead with two laps to go. Can you believe it? This is the first lap he's led all day but this could be the one that makes the difference for his championship we talked we mentioned it last week he came out of nowhere last week to win in atlanta he may do the very same thing here at texas he's got to hope he's got enough fuel to, to, to make it though he's got to hope he's got the fuel to hang on to it we're coming to the white flag this time christian vargas one and a half miles away from career win number 10 but he's got to hope that the fuel lasts there you see carter exiting the pits she'll fall a lap down but Vargas through one and two for the final time. Christian Vargas, he's, he's coasting at this point, trying to nurse every drop of fuel out of that car he can. Coming through three and four for the final time. Christian yeah, Vargas, definitely. he's going to do it. He's going to make he's it. He's going to do it. He's going to make it back to back. Vargas off of four for the final time. Christian Vargas has done it again. He wins at Texas Motor Speedway for his 10th career win. He is now the greatest of all time in the one-up superstar series with his 10th career win. And he is now a very big favorite to get his second championship in a row. Daniel Bouchard comes home second, three quarters of a second off the lead. Mark Davey, they're the only three that made it on gas. Justin Hutchinson, uh -oh. 26. It's not even worth going back through the rest of the field. Justin Hutchinson, 26 seconds back, is going to come home fourth. Nick Ortiz, fifth. Finn Guy and, Bar and Yepes are the are remaining lead lap cars. J.D. Martin, eighth, one lap down. Sam Denoto, ninth. And Lane Sanders, three top tens in a row for him. He'll come home tenth. But, oh my goodness, what a race <laughs> we've had at Texas. We, you know, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, anybody that did not think that Vargas was a championship contender, I think these last two weeks have just, uh, Vargas just went out there and said, yeah, about that. Yeah. He just, wow. Vargas was 21 points out of the lead entering Atlanta. Now he's got a 41-point lead heading to Rockingham. Can anybody stop him at this point is the question. He's got he he can quench it at Rockingham next week at the rate he's going. He he literally just said, "I'm I, I <laughs> how badly do I want this championship? I'm just gonna go get it." And he has these last two weeks. And and tonight, what a race tonight! I mean, 
what a nail biter there at the end with the fuel and and Carter first fair ran out, then Carter ran out, and, and Daniel Bouchard with the runner up finish tonight too. Good run for him and Davy. You know, despite the pull away we saw earlier, we still got a podium out of it, but probably not exactly what he wanted. But absolutely, it's going to be all coming down to the wire heading to Rockingham. So from Ryan Griffin and for myself as well, goodbye from Texas. It's been an absolute blast. Congrats to Christian Vargas. He's done it again. He wins for the tenth time in his career.